I'm going to show you very quickly some of the early research. This is the first study, and I won't go into it in great detail except to say that this experiment was performed in the Middle East during the peak of the Lebanon War in the early 1980s. It was hypothesized, based on many previous smaller experiments, that if enough people were collectively experiencing and stimulating this fundamental, powerful field of peace within, that there would be a radiated influence of peace that would affect the behavior of people throughout society. People would wake up in the morning and they'd decide, hey, I don't think I'm going to kill anybody today. <laughs> what a novel thought. That, you know, with some expanded comprehension, a less narrowly cramped, narrowly self-centered, acutely stressed vision, that those desperate acts of terrorism simply don't really have a fertile field to fall on. So this chart shows a dotted line going up and down, which is the rise and fall on a daily basis of the number of people who were meditating as a group in Jerusalem, about 1,000 people on average, sometimes more, sometimes less. And the solid line represents progress towards peace in the war in neighboring Lebanon. And even before the benefit of statistical analysis, you can almost see from the raw data that progress towards peace, measured by reduced war deaths, reduced war injuries, reduced number of bombs, that progress towards peace goes up and down almost in lockstep with the number of people who were meditating as a group, radiating this influence of inner peace to become outer peace. When this was subject to mathematical analysis, the likelihood that this is simply due to some fluke, due to chance, is less than one part in 10,000 to be able to say something with this certainty that group meditation prevented war. That is a really remarkable finding. When this was published in the Yale University Journal of Conflict Resolution, it ignited a firestorm. First of all, it took two years to publish the paper because the editors reviewed it and reviewed it and reviewed it, and they said in the end, this paper is unassailable. This paper was performed at a status, a standard of scientific rigor far beyond that required for publication in any journal. So they had to publish it, but they published it with a letter. And the letter in the journal said, the results of this experiment are so unexpected that a thousand people could influence the behavior of a million that they urged other scientists to go out and repeat the study. And that's exactly what happened over the next two and a quarter years. Seven other scientific collaborations went out and repeated the study, training and assembling groups of meditators, practicing transcendental meditation. And in every one of these experiments during this two and a quarter year period, there was a marked reduction in violence and war, 80% drop in war deaths and war-related injuries in comparison to all the other days during the two and a quarter years where there were no meditating groups when the situation grew slightly worse, as this chart shows, in comparison to seven highly positive bars showing highly statistically significant progress towards peace in every single experiment. If you put these together, the likelihood that this reduction of war was, again, simply due to chance and not due to the meditating groups was less than one part in 10 million million, million. There is far more evidence that group meditation can turn off war like a light switch than there is evidence that aspirin reduces headache pain, for example. It is a scientific fact. 